some enthusiasm right in that apartment and clap your hands. I know it may feel weird, but clap, clap your, get your children to start clapping your hands. <laughs> right in that living room, start clapping your hands, all you people. Now do me a favor and shout to God with the voice of joy. And you may have your seats in the presence of God. Thank you, worship team. Thank you guys so much. I am, man, I feel God in this place. Hallelujah, I really do. I feel, I feel like God is up to something today, mother. I feel like he's up to something. There's something that he wants to accomplish today. I am honored to be here. I honor the bishop of this house in his absence today. Can we make some noise? For bishop Timothy Clark, we honor him, his family. Uh, to Pastor George, thank you, man, for allowing me to come and hang out with you guys today. Uh, I'm just a little country boy from Rayford, North Carolina, and I'm just grateful just to be amongst my brothers and my sisters and I just believe in my heart that there is something that the Lord wants to do and wants to say to you today. And I am blessed to be standing up here because, man, we're living in a day and an age where everybody's after everything but Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I just want to get back to Jesus. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a lot. A lot that's happening and I just believe that sometimes we just got to get back to the basics and sometimes the basics seem uh, old um, and I'm just a true believer that you don't throw the baby out with the bath water. There are some foundational things that I don't care how much technology you have, <laughs> how many LED screens you have, it means nothing without Jesus if he is in the foundation of it all. So we're grateful. I'm I'm going to jump into this word. I hope it's okay. I want to, I, I don't know how to preach without reading the scripture myself. So, daughter, you did an incredible job. But it's going to feel weird to me if I don't say it first. <laughs> um, but we're going we're gonna to open up our Bibles. If you got your Bible, if you got an iPad, if you got an a Android phone, we are praying for you. If they even put a Bible on those phones, I don't know if they do or not. I don't know because I'm saved. I have an iPhone and an iPad and an iMac and a yeah, all of that good stuff. So I don't know if, if they put that on your phone. But do me a favor. I want you guys to open it up one more time with me. We're going to jump into this. And I believe that God is getting ready to do something marvelous in our eyes. So let's go back to Genesis 32, verse 22 through 28. And the word of the Lord reads, That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, here it is, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Then the man asked, what is your name? That's very powerful. That's very powerful. What is your name? And Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have wrestled with God and man and with humans and you have over." come today i want to preach a message this is going to be a little weird for some of you but i want to preach a message entitled are you tweaking do me a favor and glance over at somebody you're sitting beside and just ask him say say are you tweaking <laughs> let's pray father we love you we thank you we honor you for who you are god this moment you have created before the foundations of the world and lord here i am and I am nothing without you. On my best day, I'm nothing without you. But with you, I can do anything. So speak 
through me now. Speak a word that will shift us and change us and make us more like Jesus. Form us into the image of your son, God, until we no longer look like ourselves. Kingdom of God, come. Will of God be done. And we promise, I promise to give you all of the glory. Let today be the day that their life changes forever. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Come on, somebody shout it again. Are you tweaking? <laughs> Have you seen in the presence of the Lord? Listen, there is, there is a common phrase that I've heard my entire life from people. And this phrase, this statement just drives me crazy, right? It, it just, it, it gets under my skin. And I've heard teenagers say it. And I look at them and I'm like, yo, my guy, you're way too young to make that kind of state. You, you can't say that. But at the same time, I've also heard older people <laughs> make the same statement and it just drives me crazy. Because to me, I honestly feel like it's one of the most arrogant and, 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 and most boastful statements and, and laziest statements a person can make. Do you guys want to know what that statement is? I cannot take hearing someone say, this is just who I am. Mm, mm. This is just who I am. Because, because the problem with saying this is just who I am is that the people who have to consistently deal with your, this is just who I am. Because sometimes this is just who I am is an insult to God. It's an insult to the people around you. And it's an insult to yourself. Because what you're saying without saying when you say this is just who I am. Is that I am no longer committed to being a better person in that area of my life. I'm going to say that one more time. When you say and you rest in the fact. That this is just who I am. This is me, boo-boo. This is just me. Deal. When you say that, you are telling people, I am no longer committed to being a better person in this area of my life. And that's a problem. Because when your this is just who I am is rude, that's a problem. When, when your this is just who I am is abusive, that's a problem. When your this is just who I am walks in a room and kills everybody's vibe, that's a problem. Well, well, Todd, I was born like this. Well, well, I'm not here to fight you. Maybe you were born like this. Maybe we were all born in sin and shape in iniquity. We were all born into this world messed up. So I'm not here to fight you on how you were born. I'm just here to tell you, you can be born again <laughs> you may have been born like that you may have been born with those issues but i i'm here to tell you that you have the ability to be born again because once you are born again it gives you access to a man named jesus and jesus has the ability to change anything and with jesus he can fix restore and heal anything that you have going on in your life is anybody grateful for jesus I don't know about you, but I would be a mess without Jesus. I, I would be a wreck without Jesus. I would be in jail without Jesus. I would be messed up, toe up from the flow up without Jesus. But with him, everything has the ability to change. Because watch this. Jesus does not make me perfect, but Jesus definitely makes me better. <laughs> Are you hearing me today? I said, Jesus does not make me perfect. I wish he made me perfect, but he definitely makes me better. And so Jesus, Jesus is, is who I should be striving to be like. Jesus is who we should all be striving to be like. But Jesus, for so many of us, is not the goal that we have found other standards to follow. And for some in this room, Drake is the goal. For, for some... 
City girls is the goal. You really need Jesus if city girl is the goal. And for some, for some, LeBron may be the goal. For some, it may be Bill Gates. It may be your favorite TikToker. It may be, it may be an entrepreneur who who you admire. And and listen to me, those people who I just named are all people that you can glean some positive things from. There are people that you can take some strategies from. They're just not people who you should pattern your life after. I'm going to say that again for the back row. They're not people. They're not all bad. They're not people that you can't gain some things from. They're just not people who you should pattern your life after. You should pattern your life after Jesus. But it's so crazy to me that if I ask the hundred people in here, who is your mentor? Nobody will say Jesus. Who do you look up to? Nobody will say Jesus because we don't even view him like that. We don't even view him as somebody that I can learn from, glean from, that I should look up to. But Jesus should be our goal. Somebody shout, Jesus is the goal. Because what happens is, when you have a life where you try to pattern your life after people like that, and you try to follow their standard, you will, you will always end up and you will always fall in the place of being empty and frustrated. Because true fulfillment, here it is, true fulfillment is only found in Jesus. I'm going to say that one more time. True fulfillment, not temporary success, not temporary joy, not temporary happiness, but true fulfillment is only found in Jesus. Because you can have your dream job and not be fulfilled. You can drive a Bentley and not be fulfilled. You, you can have three million in your checking account and not be fulfilled. Acts chapter 17 verse 28, Paul puts it like this. Paul says, for in him we live and move and have our being. Somebody shout, in him. It's only in him that we find our identity. And there lies the problem. Here, here, here lies the problem. We don't want to be in him. We, we, it, it, that sounds good on paper. In him do we live, move, and have our being. But how many people can honestly say, like, I'm in him. I'm being found in him. Now, I've been over there with them, but I don't know if I'm in him. And, and the problem with being in him is that we don't mind him being our savior, but our issue is when he has to be our Lord. <laughs> We love the saving Jesus. We love the heal me Jesus. We love to get me out Jesus. We love to open the door Jesus. We love the, the bless me Jesus. But we, we have an issue and it, it becomes a problem when he has to be our Lord. When he has to be, when he actually should be our Lord and Savior. So our problem is not with the God of our yeses. But our problem is with the Lord of our nose. <laughs> and, and what's crazy is, is that a lot of times his nose aren't really nose. They're more not right now. Because there's something, there's something that God wants to get to you. And there's something that God has for you. But if you're not ready for it, it's a waste of time. There's no point in God bringing someone, something, some business, some money in your life when you are not prepared to handle it. It is pointless to pour water in a cup with holes in it for it just to pour out. So God is saying, no, 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 no. There are some things I want to do. There are some things that are in your heart that I want to give you. But are you prepared and are you ready to handle what I want to bring in your life? So sometimes he's the God of not right now because... God understands that you need to be tweaking. So, Todd, what are you what are you saying? What do you what do you say? You talk about this tweaking stuff now. Now, now, there are those of you who are like tweaking. Now, what, what are you talking about? There, but there's a there's the other half of the room who know exactly what I'm saying when I say tweak because in 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 the hood in 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 urban in the urban dictionary, t tweaking would be someone who is high on drugs, acting crazy and unseemingly. 
okay? This is a person that, that, uh, that, that's high and they may be in the middle of the street beating their head up against a wall. They may be out there cussing and fussing and swinging. And you ever seen that meme where you say, he needs some meal. That, that, that person was, was somebody who was tweaking. That's, it's somebody who says outlandish things for no reason. You may say, yep, they are tweaking. But listen, that's not the tweaking I'm talking about. The tweaking I'm talking about today is what Webster says. Webster puts it like, Webster puts it like this. He says, to improve a thing by making fine adjustments to it. Somebody shout adjustments. Adjustments, adjustments, adjustments. There are some people in this room, there are some people who are watching on your line, who are watching online, and the enemy has been trying to tell you that you need to change your goal. That you need to change this idea of what you thought God said to you and, 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 and that, that is no longer something that you will be able to obtain. I come from Atlanta, Georgia to tell you it's not your goal that's the problem. The problem is, it, the problem is you may need to tweak your plan but not change your goal. I'm going to say it for this side over here. I, may, 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 I can say it a little clearer. The problem may not be your goal, bro. The problem may be your plan and sometimes the enemy will try to overwhelm you to think you need to change your goal when the entire time the only thing you need to do is tweak your plan. And there are some people that you are closer than you've ever been in your life but there are a few adjustments that you need to make to get to where God is trying to take you. Somebody shout, I'm getting ready to tweak. I'm getting ready to tweak. And so, and so watch this, even Jesus had to tweak. Even Je Jesus, even Jesus was tweaking. Luke 2 52 says, and Jesus grew. Here it is. Jesus grew. Now, if Jesus had to grow, what makes you think you good? If Jesus had to grow in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man, what makes you feel that you could just rest in the fact that I'm good? Because what is the opposite of growth? I want you to answer that question. I want y'all right over here in this corner. I want y'all to answer that. What is the opposite of growth? What is it? Think through it. I want you to, I want you to process that in your mind. What is the opposite of of growth because some people have settled on the idea that this is just who I am because they don't feel that they have a realistic ability to change now watch this it can be easier to rest in the fact that his grace is sufficient than to believe that he's a deliverer It can be easier to rest in the fact, well, I'll just use his grace and not put forth the effort to change than to believe that he is a deliverer. Because for a lot of us, it's easier to make him a painkiller than a healer. God help me. It's easier to see him as a God that I can show up on Sundays and take two hours and escape the reality of my life that I can come in here and at least for two hours or an hour and a half not have to think about my issues not have to think about my problems not have to think about the bills not have to think about the kids and we use church as a painkiller we use worship as a painkiller. We use the word of God as a painkiller. When God is saying, I am not a painkiller, I'm a healer. But if you only see me as that, then that's all I will ever be to you. Because the God you see is the God you get. Oh, Jesus. The God you see will be the God you get. Now, if you're chill, that some of you, I got some, we got some young people in the room and you were cool with watching your mama struggle and watching God be the God that can barely help her pay the light bill. And then in your life, that's who you see him as. Then that's all he'll be. He'll be the God that will help you barely get over because the God you see is the God you get. But if you see him as a God, as more of the God of more than enough, then he will be the God of more than enough. How you see him is how you live and so the God you see is the God you get but if you only view him as somebody who can barely help you get over somebody who can barely help you make your bills get paid somebody who can barely get you to the next place in your life then that is all he will be to you 
Come on, somebody shout, the God you see is the God you get. <laughs> Hallelujah. But tell somebody, I'm getting ready to see something different. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to see something different. So we don't like, we don't like to change because changing takes work. <laughs> Tweaking takes, not twerking, tweaking. <laughs> Somebody say twerking take work too. No, no, we're not talking about twerking. Okay. Tweaking takes work. <laughs> and it can be easier again to, to, just, to just rest on the fact that God is, his grace is sufficient. When God is saying, no, 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 no. I, I, I want to be the God who delivers you so that you see me and have a distant, different testimony than your family. That you see me and you have a distant, t different testimony than your friends. I want to show you that I, not only am I a God who can take the pain away for a few hours. I'm the God who can take the pain away forever. But you're going to live on whatever level you settle for. Man, who am I talking to? You're going to live on whatever level you settle for. So now, here we are. We have Jacob. We have Jacob <laughs> who is at this point of his life where he is tired of being who he is. And watch this. If there was a person who probably felt validated for being who he was, it was Jacob. Because Jacob could, could say, I got it honestly. My mama was a liar. If there was anybody who would say, you know what, I mean, I, I'm the way I am because of how I was raised is Jacob. I mean, my mama coached me in how to steal the blessing from my mama showed me how to do that. And I'm sure there's some people in this room that you feel validated in some of your actions. You feel validated in how you feel. You feel validated in some of the things that you do because of what you saw growing up in your home. But that is still no excuse. Jacob is saying, you know what? You know, I know what I saw. I know what my mama taught me. I know what I learned. But now I got to get something different from God because this ain't working. You're, what you saw in your house is no excuse for you not to become who God has called you to be it's no excuse it's no excuse <clears throat> it's no excuse because of your bloodline it's no excuse because of how you were raised it's no excuse because of, of the blood that's running in your vein because there was blood that was shed on Calvary that was stronger than the blood that's running through your veins right now. I'm going to say that again. The blood that was shed on Calvary is stronger and is more powerful than the blood that is running in your veins right now. And so Jacob has been a trickster his entire life. The only blessing he has over his life, he stole. He stole it and had to run for 20 years and could not enjoy it. And don't you let the enemy trick you into getting out of character to gain something that you will not even have an opportunity to enjoy. I'm preaching better than y'all responding right there. I said, do not allow the enemy to make you manipulate your way into a situation. Because watch this, whatever you did to get it is what you have to do to keep it. If you lied to get it, you're going to have to keep lying to keep it. If you manipulated your way into having it, you're going to have to keep manipulating people to keep it. But I'm sorry. I'm too old. I'm tired of lying. I'm tired of having to be something that I'm not. I don't know about you today, but I'm saying, God, I need you to bless the real me. I need you to heal the real me. I need you to open the door for the real me. I don't want to have to lie to get the thing that you promised me. I don't... I don't want to have to manipulate to get the thing that you promised me because if it's really from God, you ain't got a lot to get it. If it's really from God, you ain't got to trick people to get it. If it's really from God, you don't have to manipulate people to get it. Because
because what God has for you is simply for you. It's powerful. This man stole his blessing and could not enjoy it. He stole it and had to run for his life. And now he is on his way back home, fearful and scared. He stole, man, process that. He stole it and could not enjoy it. And now he is on his way home, scared that his brother is going to beat the brakes off of him when he sees him. He is on his way back home. And he is at the point of his life where Jacob is really trying to make true tweak he's trying to make a real adjustment and so so what does he do after 20 years of running an angel tells him he needs to go home and he's going home to face some things and so here are three tweaks that I want you guys to make. I want you guys, I don't care if you're 15, I don't care if you're 53. If, if you make these tweaks in your life, I believe that your life has the ability to drastically change overnight by implementing these three tweaks. And so we, we, we find the first tweak right in the word of God, right in, right in verse 23. Uh, in Genesis, uh, the word of the Lord says, and he took them, his family, and he sent them over the brook. And he sent over all he had. Verse 24 And Jacob was left alone. The first tweak you have to make is that sometimes you have to walk alone. First tweak is sometimes you have to walk alone. Watch this. He sent his family over the brook. What do you need to send over the brook? As a matter of fact, who do you need to send? (laughs) <laughs> over the brook because there are some things that you will not walk in there are some places you will not go there are some blessings that you will never obtain until you send some people over the brook Jacob is alone watch this he's alone then he encounters this angel He would have never seen this angel or never had this encounter if he was in the group. Because some blessings don't come in the group. Some blessings only come when you are alone. And so I know some of you are like, Ty, I live with my mama. I'm going to be alone. I got to go to school on on, on Monday. How how can I be alone? and, and there's, some, there's some things that you need to send over the brook that may not just necessarily be people. There, there's, some, there's some young people in here right now. You need to send some, some music over the brook for a while. You need to send, all of us need to send social media over the brook for a little while. All, every one of us. There's, there's, some, there's some things, there's some family, there's some, there's some culture things we need to send over the brook. Because Jacob does not have this encounter if he is not alone. And there are certain blessings you cannot receive in the crowd. He has to pull you away so that you know for a fact that was God talking to me. He has to pull you away so that you know that that was God's voice that I heard. Because sometimes we can just be so, our brains and our minds can be so clouded by everything that's around us. And God is saying, listen, you, you, you want to change your life drastically? You, you want to move to another level quickly? Don't be afraid to be alone. Because even when you're alone, you're not alone. Because yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Even when I'm alone, I'm not by myself. Somebody shout, he's with me. Sometimes you have to walk alone. Second tweak, second tweak, second tweak is you have to confront it. You have to confront it. You have to confront your whatever your this is who I am. Jacob is there, and he's with this angel. And the Bible says that they wrestle all night long. 
all night long. And can I tell you, there are going to be some times, young people, there are going to be some times, middle-aged people, there are going to be some times, older people, that you're going to fight and you are going to lose. But you know what you do? You get your butt right back up and you get back in the ring and you continue to fight. Jacob says, I'm not going to let you go because I'm tired of this life. And I would rather fight until I had no more strength before I go back to being that person that has brought me to this place. My mama used to put it like this. She said, Todd, I remember my, my sister my sister was going through some things and my, and my mom was like, no, 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 leave her alone. Because when she gets sick and tired, that's where she changed. He's like, and her problem is she's not sick and tired yet. But I come to tell some of you, you better get sick and tired real quick. Because when you get sick and tired and you tell yourself, there's no way I'm going back to that. There's no way I'm going to let the enemy keep beating me up like that. Then you will stand up. And you got to realize that when you stand up, you're not standing by yourself. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Somebody shout, I got to confront it. I got to confront it. I got to confront it. Jacob, Jacob said, I got to confront it. And he wrestled all night long because he says, I'm, I don't want another counterfeit blessing. And so I'll wrestle, I'll fight, I'll fight to be free. I'll fight to be delivered. I'll fight for my children. I'll fight for my family. I'll fight for my marriage. And I'll go and I'll go until I don't have any strength left. Because even when I'm weak, that's really, that's really when I'm strong. I'll fight because I have a God that's fighting with me. The third tweak, the third tweak, third tweak is that you have to be honest. Here's the one. You have to be honest. What's your name? What's your name? But I'm a liar. No, no, no. What's your name? I've been tricking people my, my whole... What's your name? I'm a manipulator. I'm a narcissist. What? But what's your name? My name is Jacob. If you got in a car accident right now, if you, if you got shot right now and we took you to the emergency room, before they could admit you, you have to admit and be honest and tell them what's wrong with you. Before they can get you in the right room with the right surgeon, with the right person who can do something about your injury, you have to be honest and tell them what's wrong. What's your name? We'll fight all night, but until you're honest with who you are, you'll be right in the position that you were when we first started. What's your name? And he answers and says, my name is Jacob. Because Jacob is at a point in his life and he understands that the last blessing he had, he had to pretend to be somebody else. Ah! And he's at a point where he's saying, I don't want to pretend to be anybody else. Because watch this, God cannot bless who you pretend to be. God cannot heal who you pretend to be. God cannot restore who you pretend to be. He can only bless the real you. He can only heal the real you. He can only fix the real you. He can only bring back the real you. You have to be honest. What is your name? I'm a liar. I'm addicted to drugs. I struggle with pornography. I like stuff that I shouldn't like. What's your name? I'm struggling with my sexuality. What's your name? Because I can heal you 
if you tell me your name. I can fix you if you tell me your name. I can restore you if you just tell me who you are and you can say it unashamedly you don't even have to be ashamed Jacob yelled I am Jacob and he says okay thank you for being honest now I can change you now I can give you another name now I can do something different in your life because now you're not trying to be Esau now you're not trying to be your mama now you're not trying to be your father now you're not trying to be like the people on Instagram now you're just being you and I can bless the real you oh, hallelujah. somebody can somebody give Jesus praise I feel the presence of God in this place right now oh I feel God's presence in this place he wants to bless the real you there's some people in this room everybody's standing Dante you can play there's some people in this room right now and it's been easier for you to be everybody but you because you think that's what other people want. And God is saying, no, I wired you a certain way because there is something I want to accomplish in your life. And sometimes we try to run away from the thing and try to abandon the thing that God has placed in us because there's something very unique he wants to do through us because of the way that we're wired but we allow culture and we allow social media and we allow the pressures of friendships to pull us away and to have us becoming someone that we're really not and then we stand and we're like god why haven't i gotten here and why does this look like this and god is like can you just be honest for a second and just say who you really are and that's okay who you really are is okay because even if who you really are has issues if you just bring me those I can fix those even if you just being who you really are has some problems it's okay because I can have God is not afraid of your problems your mama may be your friends may be your co-workers may be but God is not afraid of your issues God is not afraid of your problems you can bring all of that to Jesus oh what a privilege it is to carry everything not some things not most things but what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer can we just take a minute or so and just be honest with God can you just right where you are just build an altar right where you are forget who you came here with forget how long you've been coming to church forget who your neighbor is and say God I gotta be honest man I'm tired of going in circles I'm tired of having this thing that the enemy told me uh, that I had to be like this because of where I was raised because of where I'm from because of who my parents were the devil is a liar whom the son sets free is free indeed and I come to tell somebody today that God is here for you today to give you a new normal you do not have to accept sickness as your normal you do not have to accept depression as your normal you do not have to accept the spirit of suicide as your normal you do not have to accept the spirit of low self-esteem as your normal but today God is here to help you tweak some things in your life to help you adjust some things in your life that your life will never be the same lift those hands come on raise that a little louder Dante I want you to open up your mouth all over this room and just be honest be honest be honest be honest with God I need your help I'm tired of having a bad attitude I'm, I'm tired of being disobedient I'm tired of being rude I'm tired of being abusive I'm tired of being a liar I'm tired of being a manipulator God you said that you can heal me so God I stand in your presence today and I'm asking you to do surgery on me I'm walking into the emergency room of this church and I'm asking a savior a real surgeon to do surgery on the inside of me cut out everything that's not like you cut out everything that pulls me away from your presence cut out everything that separates me from being with you God I want to be more like Jesus fix me come on talk church restore me redeem me I want to be more like 
Today is the day that everything changes. Hallelujah. I wish somebody had a little faith. I said, God, I thank you that today is the day that I no longer accept that this is just who I am. And now I'm bringing this who, this is just who I am to this altar. And I'm asking you to fix this who, fix this person, fix this relationship, fix this mindset, fix this idea of this is how I have to be. like your son thank you that we don't have to tweak alone that we have a God that is for us that will help us make the necessary adjustments so God I pray that faith will rise I pray that courage would rise right now I thank you that the strength of the Lord will rise thank you that we're making the adjustments the necessary adjustments to put our lives back on the road that you have ordained for us. We thank you. We bless you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. To be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. Oh, how I long to be like him. So meek and lowly, so pure and holy. Oh, how I long to be like Him. I want to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. <laughs> oh, how I gonna tweak. I need you to make some noise in this room. God bless you. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Amen. While we're in that moment, if you're watching online or if there's someone